Hey everybody, this is the first video of a new series that I'm calling Kiosk Hacking. And this was a game that we used to play at my old job where our security developers would build these lockdown systems that were intended to be used as kiosks out in the public. And we would compete to see if we could actually find any security holes in their designs to gain access to the underlying system or the network that it's on or even further than that. So this first one is actually kind of a revival of an old trick that I used to do on Windows 7 and I'm gonna to try to bring it to Windows 10 this time. Um, the only real requirement is you do have to have physical access to the actual controls of the computer itself. Um, so I'm talking about like the power button and USB ports. Um, now I know that's not the most usual thing that you're going to come across these days. Usually those are in locked boxes that are attached to the kiosk itself. But I have still seen these full computer kiosks fairly recently that are just these touchscreen monitors that have a computer or a laptop just bolted to the back of it, like a Dell Optiplex or some thin client or something like that. And if you just look behind them or look underneath them, you'll see that it's just a full computer that you can do whatever you want with it. In Walmart, I've seen them in Sears, I've seen them in Kohl's department store, um, I've seen them in Ikea. And these are really just things that you're supposed to like walk up with a product, maybe there's a barcode scanner and you can scan an item and it'll tell you how many they have or what aisle it's on and stuff like that. But the reason I'm starting with this trick is because it's something that most people would never really think of. This is an unobtrusive hack that is persistent so you can leave and come back and it will still work and it's just never expected by anybody so I think it's kind of fun. And before we get started I just wanted to show you real quick what I'm actually exploiting in this trick. So if you look here this is just a regular Windows 10 login screen. There's really nothing that I can do here without a password. Um, sometimes in the bottom left corner there's some power buttons to shut down or restart the computer. You can see what network you're connected to, but you can't make any changes. You can't right click or anything. But there is this ease of access button on the bottom right hand corner that's also accessible if you hold down the Windows key and hit the letter U. Make your computer easier to use. And you'll see this little screen pop up in the top left hand corner with a, a digital narrator who's explaining some changes that you can make to the login screen to make things easier for someone who's hearing or sight impaired. And this is actually an executable that lives in System32. It's called utilman.exe, Utility Manager. So this is the executable that we are going to be exploiting in this little trick. Okay, and for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to use this Lenovo laptop as my example kiosk. Uh, obviously, a physical computer is a physical computer. If you have access to the power button and the USB ports, everything's going to be pretty much exactly the same. The only other thing I do have here is a flash drive with a live distribution of Linux. So this can be basically any distro that can run live. I think I used to use DSL, which stands for damn small Linux. Um, anything that can boot really quickly um, and doesn't stay up on the screen too long, like waiting for menus and stuff to load is fine. Uh, for this, I actually installed the newest version of Kali on this flash drive. So that's what we're going to use for this example. So the only thing I've done to this computer so far is held the power button down to shut it down. And then I'm going to go ahead and plug in my flash drive and power it back on. So obviously at this point you can tell that we're going to boot to the USB drive. Um, I need to hit F12 to get into it, but let's say for example you try to get into the boot menu and you can't. I'm going to go into F1 for BIOS. And I'm going to show you an example of why you may not be able to boot into this drive. So probably I would go ahead and quickly get into the boot menu and try to boot from the flash drive first, but if it doesn't work, you need to quickly get into the BIOS and run over to security. And then you'll scroll down to secure boot, and then you need to make sure that secure boot is disabled. And then you need to go over to the startup tab and look for legacy boot and make sure that UEFI and legacy boot are both supported. Once that's done, you're sure that you can actually get into the computer, then you can just go ahead and get out of the BIOS. So the keys you need to hit are gonna be dependent on the um, manufacturer of the computer. For Lenovo, it's F12. I'm gonna go ahead and jump down to my USB device as my boot drive. For Kali, I'm gonna do a live system boot. So I did used to use Backtrack for this, which was a little bit nicer than Kali because instead of booting to a full graphical user interface, it would just boot straight to a terminal, which is quite a bit faster and it looks a little bit less inconspicuous because even though it is just a bunch of code up on the screen, it can get to it faster and let you do your work without people seeing that you're running a separate operating system on it. So for this stuff, what I would probably do is turn my back, uh, kind of cover the monitor as much as you can so that no one can see what you're doing. And as soon as you get to the prompt, go ahead and very quickly log in and get to a terminal. Then once you get booted into Kali, you'll see on the desktop there's a folder called Windows. 
and this actually is the Windows uh, partition on the hard drive of the computer itself. So we can go ahead and start grabbing these folders and copying them to the flash drive or off to an FTP server or something, but my little trick I want to do a little bit differently. So I see here that Kali has already mounted the Windows partition to media slash root slash Windows. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a terminal here. And I'm going to go cd to media slash root slash Windows. And then inside of Windows, I want to go to the Windows folder and system32. And then obviously if I do a, an ls in here, I can see all the files in system32. But the only one I care about is that utilman.exe uh, executable file. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say move utilman.exe to utilman.old. And all that's doing is it's just renaming it from utilman.exe to utilman.old. And then I'm going to take uh, the CMD, the command prompt executable, and I'm going to copy that from cmd.exe to utilman.exe. So what I've done here is I've overridden the old utilman.exe with the command prompt but I've backed up the old utilman with utilman.old. So obviously the executable is still there, but once we restart the computer, anytime anyone tries to call the utilman executable, it's gonna run the command prompt instead. And I think you're probably seeing where this is going, but let's go ahead and restart. And now I can just grab my flash drive, unplug it, turn the computer back on, and walk away. Now once the computer boots back up, if we hit the spacebar, we'll get to the login screen. So just like we did in the beginning when we held down the Windows key and hit the letter U, let's try that again. This time we get a command prompt, which is awesome. <laughs> And you'll see up at the top here, it's actually running the command prompt as the utilman.exe, obviously because that's what we renamed it to be. So the first thing I always do whenever I get into a command prompt is I see who is running this, what permissions do I have? So if I do a who am I, you'll see this is currently running as the system user. So I can go ahead and I can dig in and I can see everything. So let's open a fresh command prompt. A directory there's everything I can CD into users there's all my users I can get into the admin folder I can see all their files but I want to do something a little bit more interesting than this uh, let's see what happens if I run Explorer oh look at there I have a taskbar so obviously this is the system user so I can't do a whole lot I can't actually open the start button I can't really do much um, I can't control any open programs that are running in the background. I can't change the time. I can't connect to a different Wi-Fi. However, I can right click and open the task manager. So I can go ahead and come in here and I can run new task. But what I want to do is I want to mess with this admin account. I want to see if I can actually get into this account. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run net user and admin, and I'm going to change the password to something else. Let's set it to this. Yeah, look at there. So now let's go back to the login screen. Now I can log in with the admin account with my new password. So now I have full administrative access to this computer. I can do anything I want. I can copy all the files off. I can destroy it if I really, really wanted to. Anyway, that's it. Uh, so yeah, one little teeny tiny trick to uh, rename an executable that's accessible from the login screen allows you to change the administrative password to the computer and get access to everything. So that was trick number one. Uh, we'll see you in trick number two.